the protectorate of the weak and the meek and the mild, the, the people that front these politicians are the vilest scum that have walked this earth. Yeah, I've just started recording again, and I'm just going to remind the author, the listeners, that we visited the Ditchley Foundation this morning. I was talking about the crimes and the geopolitical manipulation involving Baroness Blackstone, who's a university leader and is now stealing £50,000 from honours graduates for a four-year educational project. She, lived, she works at Greenwich University, who and our office is in the Admir Admiralty Building, right next door to the Cutty Sark, and all of those icons of empire. Uh, she's involved in running uh, various companies like Babcock, one of Britain's biggest munitions companies, uh, and she's involved in companies that are much less well known, that have won the contracts for the Channel Tunnel, lucrative thing. We've now learned that in the last couple of days that she's on the board of the Anglo-French I forget the name of the, the club uh, but I'll find it in a few minutes uh, and Gordon is telling us about how they manipulate you know the outcomes in various countries across the globe Miss Blackstone or the Baroness is involved in the manipulation of Eastern Europe and in that Anglo-French alliance and with the engineering company that built the Channel Tunnel. No wonder the earlier dialogue was shut down. She's now obligated on the board as a relatively new member of the Anglo-French Alliance, which is a director-only company. It's only got 14 to 15 employees. All of them are in the House of Lords or the House of Commons, and its registered business address is in Westminster in the Parliament building that's how hypocritical the whole scenario is she's manipulating Eastern Europe and the Anglo-French contract market for decades and it's now her turn to give some of those contracts to her mates in the directorate elsewhere Gordon over to you tell us a little bit more about the Ditchley Foundation well, it's when you when you understand that these people sit in a, in a boardroom uh, every uh, say six times a year, and they they fathom out how best they can manipulate uh, corporate uh, disasters to their benefit. And this is why nobody looks and has the time or the fortitude to sit down and and, and go through realms of documents to understand the mechanics. And when you understand the mechanics of what they're up to and what they've been up to for the last 20, 30 years, you get a better overview of corporate es espionage. And when you identify the boiler room, which is a complicit uh, an address where hundreds, if not thousands, as in 788-790 Finchley Road, where there are over half a million, half a million shell companies and that's why I email people like Vince Cable to show his negligence in protecting this country, the banks, financial institutions and private investors. Oh, it's quite shocking. Can I read for the listeners? So you're talking about financial fraud, but what I'm most concerned about these groupings is geopolitical violence in the innocent countries that they pretend to be determining the future of. They're actually brutalizing them, asset stripping them, and imposing our corporate entities on the running of vast tracts of land elsewhere. So that there's the Anglo-French Alliance, and I've just learned that, that Miss Blackstone is also a director, or Baroness Blackstone is also a director of the Eastern Europe uh, you know, Foundation, and it is, we're in the process of brutalizing those countries, of making them members of an EU scam, which is simply a scam. We're stripping the countries of their sovereignty, we're imposing the euro on them, and all of the assets of that country get assets stripped by the heads of the central banks that are put in by the heads of the merchant banks and all the infamous banks that we talk about in daily videos. 
Uh, the whole world is now in the thrall of people like, can I just read down some of the listing here? It's a cross-party cabal. Baron Hennessy, Baroness Williams of Shirley, uh, Theresa Britton Williams. That's a Labour Party grandee for decades. Now in the House of Lords, uh, we've got the Hamilton family, we've got Lord George Eiley McNeil Robertson of NATO, and the infamous cover-up of the Dunblane mass Massacre and the issuance of the licence through that person's signature, uh, the gun licence for the murderer. Uh, yeah. Then we go down, we've got Professor Sir David King, Sir Crispin, Crispin Char Cervantes Tickle, uh, Ed Admiral Sir James Henry Fuller Eberly, Baroness Helen Mary Warnock, Baroness O'Neill, Baroness Blackstone, that's the one that we started with, Baroness Bottomley, I think that will spark a sentence or two from Gordon. Yeah, well that locks into John Michael Bottomley, who runs 545 uh, um, fake oil, gas and mining companies um, out of One America Square, which when you check those companies, they all end up in, as a financial disaster. And these people, because they're interlocked and interrelated to people of positions of power, are never confronted. And yet, when you watch, if you uh, have Skype or Virgin, they, they uh, pummel the viewers with um, cops on camera and cops war on crime and uh, uh, traffic cops. And when you check them, that, that's what we've been reduced to now, is uh, social policing for the, uh, um, the individuals who are drunk and disorderly or committing shoplifting. These are simplistic crimes, and yet trillion dollar crime is just left to run on its own. Yeah, so, typi typified by the Tottenham riots. They had to yeah. bring police down from Scotland to police a tiny region of North London in a riot that filled the whole of Britain's jails. The people that perpetrate these massive financial frauds are elevated from the cabinet to the House of Lords and they are criminals in both chambers with complete impunity. I think the reason that the last video was shut down because we went more to geopolitical issues and the actual identity of Lord Frederick Ad Edward Robin Butler of Brockwell I don't believe that is Rab Butler that was involved in one of the inquests into the Iraq munitions scandals, but it is an inquest chair on war crimes, and that is why they shut us down in the middle of the, la the creation of the last video. Well, we I were talking about what University of Warwick rules. Do you remember that? That's when the computer went haywire. That's, yeah, that's Can the, you explain the University the of Warwick rules to the listeners? Yeah, that's uh, public immunity indemnification, which means that the uh, uh, anything that is in conflict to the to the realm is automatically uh, removed. And what they try to do is protect those seniors at the top, where there's self-incriminating evidence uh, on. But on can the, you tell them what the University of Warwick rules are and how simple? the instructions to the participants are? Well, as I said, is that they, they overview an inquiry. All these uh, uh, objections or truths are uh, omitted, and then they sign uh, PII, which, uh, uh, where the reports are pre-written, and they go through that report, and then it's published. Where it, it so they write a script for the... In this is correct, what yeah. got us shut down the last that's, time. That's what I've been informed by our learned friend in Bath. Yeah. Uh, as to how they use a PII to, to protect those at the top and those that are uh, actually identified as being involved in, in mass money laundering and fraud theft. So the participants are given a script for the premeditated outcomes of the inquest and they're asked to adhere to that for fear of their lives. The other yeah. thing that got us shut down was we were talking about the sacrifice that was made by David Kelly, uh, tragically no longer with us because he was trying to adhere to the laws that, you know, the war crimes 
diktats that mean that if there has been a nuclear explosion, it has to be reported by civil servants and parliamentarians. Some of those things were overlooked. David Kelly was compromised. He desperately wanted to receive his pension. He desperately stuck to the rules on that basis, but he lost his life because of that. Uh, and that was where we were talking when the last video was shut down. This time, well, I believe I believe that was in relation to the North Korean uh, detonation of a nuclear. And it uh, looks weapon. as if they've just done it again. <laughs> uh, that's just pathetic. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know what we can do. Oh, oh no, we, we still got it. It was just my screensaver this time. <laughs> last time it was a del deliberate stuff up. It went. You know, it stopped recording. This time we're still live on the air. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, 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 so that's ten minutes worth on the Ditchley Foundation. Can you tell us how they have manipulated issues across the globe or they've perpetrated frauds in specific terms? Well, that's, what I, that, that's where my expertise comes in in regard to, to mining operations, albeit uh, six years at uh, Goldfields of South Africa is to understand how, how uh, thousands of companies are able to launch on the alternative investment market uh, who have no product other than um, an AIM admission to trade document where they show a group of people uh, on, in um, faraway lands uh, purporting to have uh, found vast amount of gold, uranium, uh, copper, zinc, tin, doesn't matter what product, or oil, and then these people then launch uh, exotic name companies uh, and then register on the alternative investment market as the only vehicle for them to raise money from banks, financial institutions, and private investors by floating shares. Now, once, once those companies have floated uh, uh, maybe 15 million pound, or in the case of the Falkland Islands with five companies, where they've got a market capitalization of five companies over a billion pounds. They then seek to cash strip the raised funds and launder it to vir virtual other subsidiary companies, which they are directors of also. They then use their um, extended uh, cash burn to uh, give themselves highly inflated salaries and then go on road shows all over the world raising more fu funds on other stock exchanges it's 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 a uh, it's a joke it's a joke and right at the bottom we've got Baroness Linda Chalker on the Ditchley Foundation why is she such a famous name Baroness Chalker yeah uh, I think I named her in a one of the uh, previous uh, Pandora's Box series where I've accused various people, uh, especially dignitaries, of being complicit in structuring uh, uh, virtual companies. And no better blackmail tool is to give somebody £50,000 a year for being on the board of directors of a virtual company. And, and this is how they they move themselves into the circles of, and corridors of power by um, bringing in politicians, MPs, lords, uh, baronesses, etc., and, and specifically a lot of VIPs um, to, to give those companies a sense of respectability. And, and uh, uh, these are nothing more than Ponzi scams. And because when, I mean, when you look at Baroness Valerie Amos, she was a director of Sierra Rutile Limited, which is a sister company to Titanium Resources Group, which also has Sir Samuel S. and Jonah, which is why I said to you is that once you get people uh, within those fields of complicity in, in Ponzi scams, you have a blackmail tool that they can't then turn around and say, oh, well, let's have an inquiry on this company. It's, it's a Ponzi scam because then you would start to bring in people like Baroness Chalker of Wallasey, because when you check her directorships, you will come up with a company called Equator Exploration Limited. Strangely, Baroness Chalker was a non-executive director. 
It's so, stunning. It's stunning how evil and greedy these people are. One of the listed people on the Ditchley Foundation is the Right Honourable Sir John Major of Centrica fame. Can I just tell? Can I just remind the public that the big six energy companies are actually the same energy company that have different ways of charging the same members of the public for the same product that was built by this great nation at the public expense as a public initiative and is still now being sold by people like Major who's a director at Centrica. In the last four years the gas bills in Scotland have risen 20%, 20%, 20% this year as a token gesture because they're under threat because of videos like this they've confined the price hike to 17%. They tell us in the Westminster building using tools like Nick Robinson at the BBC that inflation in this country is somewhere between 2 and 3%. It is a downright lie and it is a criminal cabal. Tell them something about Major's business interests since he privatised all of our energy assets. Well, when, when they say privatised, what they're doing is they, they, they're leaning it into the arms of this cabal, this this syndicate, this uh, network of uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, Oppenheimer's, uh, the Rothschilds, who then take control of everything. You're moving it out of public uh, access into the private industries, just the same as they use uh, private military companies uh, instead of when they reduce our military uh, capabilities, which has been extended all over the world purely to control the, the, the mineral assets of various countries. But when you look at uh, um, all the public amenities, you're, they're turning now to G4S and private military companies to run uh, much of the dirty work that we're conducting. Can we just the stay on the energy assets for just a few more minutes well, so that I can, reveal, I can reveal for the public the, the boss at Iberdrola, which is now selling what was already a product in my hometown when I was age six. The product, uh, the distribution chain, the outlets for that, the electricity substations are in exactly the same place. They're exactly the same. The product is identical to what we were using in our council homes when I was six years old. Yeah? The boss yeah. at Iberdrola gets 9 million euros a year to steal from European citizens and he is Portuguese. He's a visiting professor at Edinburgh University where a lot of the financial crimes are committed in the city of Edinburgh. We've talked a lot about 50 Lothian Road. He's been pictured embracing Alex Salmond warmly in a bond that is stealing from British taxpayers and British consumers. It is obscene and the truth needs to be outed. That's the energy scandals that are happening on a daily basis. Uh, you know, well, I, I would like to see um, the, the records for the outputs of northern Iraq oil fields, which is now controlled by our major um, energy companies. We, we are the people, Britain and America and, and uh, Australia, have control of the Iraq oil fields. We, we are the people that are, or our countries, are the people who are reaping 70% of the profits from all the oil recovered from those oil fields. Now, they don't have to give the true figures because who's going to check? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's going to check. You're not interested. People rather watch uh, Coronation Street. They're not interested in, in fact, in forensic fact. And this is what allows these people to steal trillions. No, nobody checks. Nobody. Yeah, Until it, you look at paperwork, which is a very boring subject, and that's why films are far better to retain the interest of, of any public. And you and I could make thousands of films uh, of corruption in the oil, gas and mining industries, which would bring politicians to their knees. But because we, are, uh, we have no financial access to start a small company, 
they'll just carry on doing it. Well, can we just... We're 19 minutes in now, and it's been excellent. It's quite shocking what you've exposed as usual. But I'd like to talk about... We are now engaging anti-treason researchers on all continents across the globe. They're really excited about the messages that we're putting out because they share in what's happening here. Basically, the political classes and the elites are stealing from taxpayers globally. It is scandalous, and more and more people in this world of global education and communication are now waking up to that. The treason word scares the British cabinet shitless, which is why we no longer have access to my elected MP Michael Moore, because of the crimes that they're committing in the directorates from that parliament building, which are actually used as the hosts for massive multinational Ponzi schemes. We mentioned a couple of days ago the Westminster Foundation for Democracy Limited. Yes. Uh, and the fact that these things are happening out of our seat of government is absolutely obscene. We're they, getting they, news this very morning that the, the people that are Marines and Air Force members in America that have been in other nations for the whole of their career, a bit like you, and they're still waiting for their pensions, they've lost several limbs, they live a life in poverty, the Marines now are aware that the president is a cheap shot crook and they're getting very close to that edgy era where it would be easily to it would be easy to collapse the regime because the troops that fight for them on a daily basis are now being stripped of their jobs and they're having mercenary armies take their place from That's elsewhere right. It's fundamentally simple to see what the government is trying to do. They want the police jobs to be stripped out. They want people who cannot speak good, good English from Lithuania to have the Kalashnikov in their hand and they use UKIP and the diversionary tools to get the ethnic hatred and the job loss issues aired on the telly with Nick Robinson's implicit and complicit support. They're doing what they did in the 1930s all over again, but they're doing it in a really dangerous way now because 7 billion people can communicate with each other. But because we understand that Gmail, McAfee, the search engines and the Intel people who all use the Casio website designers are actually monitoring our every conversation on Skype and they're monitoring our emails and all of the communication vents that we have like Facebook. Now this is a position of advantage for honest men like you and I and this morning I'm engaging activists who are pacifists, outspoken pacifists in Japan and in America in Plum City. They are civil, they are former military people themselves, they've been in the Air Force like you They've suffered a lot at the hands of the government and the tyrants that rule the world and they are in the face now of those same tyrants and they're informed by you and I and we're increasingly we're going to be publishing videos together provided the intel agencies that are run out of Baroness Black's headquarters near Woolwich. You remember the, the false flag bombing incident in Woolwich? Well, I can't say it's a false flag No, no, you don't want to get into the conspiracy theory. I, no, don't label me as a conspiracy theorist. I'm a good researcher in a field that I can, can give good comment on. And I don't want to go down that route. All I can say is that with my research... But it is not a conspiracy theory that two mosques were burned within a fortnight of that event taking place. Uh, and it is not a conspiracy theory that the company ISIS is also listed along with McAfee and those yes. other companies in the lists that use ASCII as their website designer. It yes, is an I, I Intel agree. surveillance network that is stealing from the people and is part of the treason word that is now making them panic. I, look, 
George, you, uh, you go on about various subjects which, are, you know, I, I'm not an expert on. All I can quote on is, is my life skills, which, which enabled me to do the research work that I've done over 13 years. And uh, there is no one who would perform, even with Tony Blair. I would rip him to pieces because of his involvement in that Korean, South Korean energy company, because he's a disgrace to this country. Uh, David Cameron. I'm not sure I've heard the South Koreans. What's the name of the company? Uh, UI Energy. Oh, yeah. With, yeah. With his other co advisor were ex um, uh, Bill, uh, sorry, uh, uh, George Bush's senior uh, Republicans and uh, uh, Bob Hawke, the ex Prime Minister of Australia. So, what you have is, is politicians who are public servants who are nothing more than scheming, conniving, money laundering, line your own pocket, uh, scum. Now, I don't care as an individual whether they lock me up for the rest of my natural life. There, there's one thing that I cannot be bought from, and that's my soul. And those people have betrayed myself as a serviceman. They've betrayed the nation's serviceman. These people have done it just to line their own pockets and the biggest syndicate who manipulate their mouthpieces. And that's that's the biggest crime for anybody that's ever put a uniform on. It's not only that I want to emphasize that Baroness Blackstone is the boss at a university. Like Miss Manning and Buller. You mentioned GCHQ in the in the video that we had shut down. Yeah. They are now university leaders. Family leaders are not allowed to smack their children, but the boss at the university, who is a former Intel presence, or is currently still involved with it, is now taking fifty thousand pounds from every British student for a job that will get them for for a future that will make them homeless and jobless because of the greed of these sectors. Lord Patton, we've talked about him at length, the boss at Lonro, the boss at Lonmin, the boss at Oxford University. He is a criminal and he is doing the same thing to his student charges even in Oxford. The parental generation are stealing from their own children and they have no shame about that but they are going to develop it really, really soon as we continue this dialogue with Japan and America. And innocent people that are being abused and sent to the DSS department because our government is hell-bent on dismembering our future. They do not want Britain to be a respectable sovereign state that is capable of feeding itself, heating itself and defending itself. They want that to be in the hands of private militias so that they can just get the numbers down. George, do you, do you know um, uh, Nick Clegg was paid prior to his uh, election as the Deputy Prime Minister £250 a month into his personal bank account by an ex-mining boss. And I also find that uh, uh, Miriam Clegg was paid £400 an hour by a mining giant accused of trampling on the rights of Saharan tribesmen. The, these are the leaders. No wonder he sits there like, like a muppet behind uh, uh, David Cameron. These people, are uh, they are vile, money laundering scum. Well, when, and, you, and when you told me about the Right Honourable Sir David Steele of Aquid, being yeah. involved with the legendary Fem Fleming family that wrote the Bond novels, you know, the heroic tales about Britain's sacrifice in World War, which are actually told by profiteers and double agents in World Wars, and who are now responsible. What was the company that you revealed for me the other day that nearly knocked me off my chair? The Future of Syria Foundation or something? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a... Uh, uh, when you check back on some of the directors uh, for the for the Sade Foundation, you find these people are all 
they're all peas in the same pod. These people are the, the, the syndicate. These are the syndicate who uh, a transcontinent syndicate of the, the rich and famous. So you've got the Fleming author, the famous yeah. spy team. You've got David Steele, who initiated the breakaway government in Scotland and all the scams that led to the massive overspend on the Parliament building. That same David Steele has stripped out all decent scientific funding because he was the chairman of the Wellcome Trust and now British universities who are engaged in decent activities get no funds for the research, which is why I'm doing this now <laughs> rather than teaching neuropharmacology and how the brain works at the cellular level. It can, is can I just give you a quote, George? Uh, because uh, I just had it up in front of my eyes. When I, uh, when I was trying to re resort back to Nick Clegg getting 250 quid a month into his personal bank account prior to the general election, which took him into power as a coalition um, deputy prime minister, uh, there was a report in the Mail Online, um, and I think that was, uh, let me see, let me see the date. That was, it can be recovered any 14th of April 2012 where Nick Clegg's wife, Miriam, was paid £400 an hour by a mining giant. I, I mean, how can these people well, stand the, up? The treason researchers in America have revealed that Nick Clegg's wife is much more dangerous than Nick Clegg. She, well, is, she is the boss of an assassination bureau in Belgium. And you know all about the potency of assassination bureaus in Belgium because of the Britain's munitions scams that embroil Jonathan yeah, that Aitken was, and Mark Thatcher yeah, in that the killing Bull. of British scientists. That was Gerald Bull that they assassinated. Um, he was the uh, chairman of um, Astra Holdings, or Astra. Yeah. Um, which was then, um, one of the directors was Gerald James, who wrote the book In the Public Interest, which highlighted how MI6 infiltrated his basic firework company which turned into a munitions company and then used it as a a smuggling tool for uh, corporates like BAE systems to move vast amount of munitions uh, through Jordan into Iran and to Iraq. And I, we, We've talked about this at length and I, yeah. we're now over 30 minutes well, so that reference to BAE systems and Britain's munitions production units yeah. takes me back to Baroness Blackstone in Greenwich where the Admiralty used to thrive. She is a director at Babcock. Yeah. The munitions giant. She's stealing from children in the UK and she's killing children all over the globe because she sits on the Eastern Europe Geopolitical Manipulation Committee along with the Anglo-French profiteering effort. In the things that we talked about yesterday, we have families of the magnitude of the Bismarcks in this network talking with the Flemings as if they were still bosom friends. The whole thing is obscene. It is a massive crime against the world's people and it will be outed really soon. Thanks well, for your help, Gordon. I think we'll stop there because that's 33 minutes now. Okay, no, and that's no, an important no. Freemasonic number, as you know. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So I'll just stop the recording.